Hello and welcome to another video tutorial on how to calculate belt pull and required belt power in conveyor belts. In this sequence, we will discuss how to calculate required belt pull and how to calculate required belt power on an inclined roller supported belt conveyor to move discrete packages. This video is intended to be a complement to the other videos which we've already posted on our YouTube channel and our website addressing such topics of how to move discrete packages on a horizontal slider bed, how to calculate belt pull and required power to move packages on a horizontal roller supported conveyor belt, and how to calculate various belt tensions and required belt pull and power in bulk materials handling applications. In this tutorial, we are going to see how to calculate a component of belt tension required to overcome gravity. We've already covered the uh, equation, discussed it in some length on how to calculate the belt pull required to overcome roller bearing friction. We'll mention that briefly. And in this segment, we'll show how to calculate the belt pull component required to overcome gravity. And at the end, once we've uh, calculated required power for an average set of parameters, we will do a sensitivity analysis just as we did on our roller conveyor for horizontal applications to move discrete packages. As we have said in almost all of our video tutorials on the topic of belt pull and belt power, I remind the viewers that power equals force times velocity. Now let's look carefully at the equations which Romeka uses to calculate required belt pull and belt power. And I remind you, as I said in the segment on how to calculate belt pull for roller supported horizontal conveyors, this is intended to be an average conveyor. If your, if your roller conveyor is ex extremely wide, or the rollers for some reason are particularly thick walled, then these uh, assumptions would not be valid. However, for an average conveyor of average width and normal roller size, uh, these equations are quite uh, handy. And uh, the parameters would apply to a wide variety of applications. And let me explain uh, what the two equations uh, mean. The first one shows how to calculate the required belt pull to overcome friction in the roller bearings. And I'll elaborate at th that on a minute. L represents the length of the conveyor. PN, PPR, and PM I'll define in just a minute. The equation required to figure out belt pull to overcome gravity is here where H uh, refers to the change in elevation from the tail pulley to the head pulley and PM uh, will be defined in a minute. Here are definitions for the parameters to be used in these equations. PN refers to the weight per foot of the belt and if the brand of the belt is not known we like to use five pounds per foot of belt length. PPR refers to the weight per foot of the rotating parts or the rolling stock. Once again, if we don't know the brand of the roller, five pounds per foot is a good number to get us in a close ballpark of what we need for belt pull and required power. And finally, PM refers to the weight per foot of the product to be handled. Now let's select some parameters and see how to apply the equations to calculate required belt pull and required belt power. <clears throat> For discussion purposes, let's assume that we have a conveyor of a length of 100 feet, so L is 100 feet, and let's assume that the change in elevation is H, which is 20 feet. Let's also assume that the conveyor belt speed is 100 feet per minute, and let's assume that rollers support the carrying strand and rollers support the return strand. And finally, let's assume we're working at a place which is going to be handling 600,000 pounds of cargo in an eight hour shift. And that consists of 12,000 packages of cargo in an eight hour shift. That gives us an average package weight of 50 pounds per package 
Let's plug all of these into our equations and see what we get for required belt pull and what we get for required belt power. Given these parameters, now let's calculate required belt pull to overcome the friction in the roller bearings. Uh, this is the equation I presented previously. Let's calculate PM, which is the weight per foot of the product to be handled. Uh, at any point in time, we know from studying the average handling rate at the facility to be moving these packages, we know that any point in time there will be 25 packages on the belt. And we figured out that the average package weight would be 50 pounds per package. 25 times 50 divided by a conveyor length of 100 feet gives us a weight per foot of product to be handled of 12.5 pounds per foot. So, uh, as I mentioned previously, here's how we can set up this equation. We use 12.5 pounds per foot for the product to be handled. We'll use 5 pounds per foot for the rolling stock. And we use 5 pounds per foot of belt weight. And I point out to you that 0 0.04 is a good frictional coefficient to use to represent the uh, rolling bearing friction that we would expect. 0.04 times L times 2PN plus PR plus PM gives us the belt pull required to overcome friction. Now let's pull all of these numbers together and see what the belt pull requirement is. 0.04 times 100 feet of conveyor belt length times the sum of these numbers 2 times 5 pounds per foot is 10 pounds per foot for belt weight, 5 pounds per foot for rolling stock, and 12.5 pounds per foot of product to be handled. That gives us a belt pull requirement of 110 pounds to overcome roller bearing friction. Now let's calculate the amount of belt pull required to overcome gravity. You'll recall that I said the equation is set up like this force equals change in elevation of h times the weight per foot of the product to be handled. So we know that h equals 20 feet. The weight per foot of the product to be handled is 12.5 pounds per foot. The product of these number, the product of those two numbers is 250 pounds. So that gives us the component of belt pull required to overcome gravity. Let's combine these two belt pull numbers and see what the total belt pull requirement is to handle this load. Okay, now let's pull this together, see how much belt pull is required, and then find out what the required power requirement is. <clears throat> total belt pull equals 110 pounds to overcome roller bearing friction, plus 250 pounds required to overcome gravity for a total belt pull requirement of 360 pounds. As I said previously, power equals force times velocity, or power equals belt pull times belt speed. We'll plug in our number of 360 pounds of belt pull. We know that the belt speed is 100 feet per minute, 100 feet per minute. Therefore, the product of these two numbers is 36,000 foot-pounds per minute, foot-pounds per minute. And since we know in imperial units, one horsepower equals 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. We can convert this to a useful unit of measure, and we know that power equals 36,000 foot-pounds per minute divided by 33,000 foot-pounds per minute to get an answer of 1.1 horsepower. Now we need to make a selection of what size conveyor drive to install. Now let's take a look at required power and make a selection of what to install to drive this conveyor. We calculated that required power, based on an average package weight of 50 pounds per package, 1.1 uh, horsepower should do the job. So we might be tempted to select one and a half horsepower just to have a little extra power in reserve. However, 
it's a good idea to do a sensitivity analysis when making decisions such as this. My question is, is the weight per foot of product of 12.5 correct? We base that number on an average package weight of 50 pounds per box. Well, let's assume that when we double check the parameters on this uh, situation, we discovered that the plan of the facility was to move 120 pound boxes from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. each day and then move boxes with an average box weight of 26.67 from 10 a.m. to the end of the shift. Let's plug in a box weight of 120 pounds per box and see what happens to our answer. Is the required power 1.1? Is it going to be beneath our selection of 1.5 horsepower or not? Let's check. Remember how to calculate the average product weight per foot. We know the conveyor will hold 25 packages on it at any one time. Now if we insert a package weight of 120 pounds, 25 times 120 divided by a conveyor length of 100 feet, we find out that the average weight of the product is 30 pounds per foot. So the uh, belt pull required to overcome friction in the roller bearings becomes this, 0.04 times 100 times the sum of these numbers. Uh, 10 pound per foot of belt, 5 pound per foot of rolling stock, 30 pound per foot of product, we get a required belt pull of 180 pounds. Previously, this number was 12.5 pounds per foot, and the required belt pull was 110 pounds to overcome friction. Now watch this. Let's check the belt pull required to overcome gravity. Uh, the belt pull required to overcome gravity is 20, pound, 20 feet, change in elevation, times a product weight of 30 pounds per foot. 20 times 30 is 600 pounds. Previously, this number with the lighter boxes was 250 pounds. So the total belt pull was 110 plus 250 or 360 pounds. Now, as we check the situation between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. at this facility, we find out that 180 pounds plus 600 pounds gives us a total required belt pull of 780 pounds. So from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m., the belt pull requirement is going to be substantially higher. Let's convert this belt pull into required power and see if a selection of a 1.5 horsepower drive system is adequate. Now let's finish our analysis and see if our selection of 1.5 horsepower is adequate. We know that at 50 pounds per package, the required power is 1.1 horsepower. We might be attempted to make a drive selection of 1.5 horsepower. However, when we're handling 120 pound packages, the required pool is 780 pounds. So therefore, we know that belt pool times belt speed equals required power, 780 pounds of pool times 100 feet per minute belt speed gives us a required power of 78,000 foot-pounds per minute. And so since we know that uh, 33,000 foot-pounds per minute equals one horsepower, 78,000 divided by 33,000 yields a result of 2.4 horsepower. So we require 2.4 horsepower from 8 a.m. until 10 a.m. If we had selected 1.5, we'd be in big trouble. So the, the recommended drive should be three horsepower. The point of the analysis is to make sure you do a sensitivity check if you're in doubt in any of the parameters. We hope you found this short tutorial useful. For more tips on conveyor design and maintenance, you can click the two links that you'll see at the bottom of the screen right now. To go to our website, click the link in the upper right hand corner of your monitor and subscribe to our, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the link on the upper left hand corner. Thanks for watching.